Hello, hi everyone. Welcome again to Hope Alive with Mary. What a pleasure to be here with you guys again. I hope you're doing well. I hope everyone is keeping their hope strong and alive. I'm here to encourage you, motivate you, and inspire you never to give up. This race, it is not a, uh, um, what's the name of this other, it's, it's a marathon, okay, it is a marathon, and you need a lot of endurance and resilience to make it to the end, and we are here sharing you on to say, keep going, hallelujah, hallelujah, so I want to share with us today about the desire to finish well, the desire to finish well, you know, wanting and desiring to finish well. We all, you know, um, I know we we're expecting it. I'm, I'm going to talk about the recent news and it's still making the headlines everywhere about the death of the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. And even though we knew it was going to happen eventually one day, she's 96. Come on, God has blessed her with longevity. She has lived long. But again, um, it still came as a shock. Literally, it came as a shock because prior to that, just a couple of days to the, her death, she was smiling. She was there receiving the new uh, Prime Minister of uh, uh, of United Kingdom, Liz Truss. And, you know, it was really, really nice to see her, even though she was frail, but she was still smiling. She was standing there. She, you know, greeted her, had a couple of ceremony on that day. But on the following day, just to hear that, okay, she's resting. She cancelled her meeting with um, the Privy Council. And then, then on Thursday, Pam, she's dead. Oh my goodness. It came as a shock because, I mean, unlike her husband who had really been ill and we see that he's been in and out of hospital a lot of times. So we kind of were prepared, um, you know, for that. But for her, it was quite sudden and it really hit me. I really felt very sad. I really felt like, oh, the queen is gone, you know. So it was really a sad time. And I know maybe a, a lot of people around the world also felt the pain of losing their loved ones. But why am I talking about, um, you know, what I'm talking about today, I want us to remember any time of death is a time of reflection. Either it's a death of an old person or a young person, it should be. Funeral times are genuinely a time of reflection. <clears throat> I don't, can't remember which prophet it was now the Lord was saying to go and visit the morning house. When you go to the morning house, there is a time. If you are sensible and a reasonable person, there's a time to begin to think that no, however long you live, there is one day, a time will come that the curtain will be pulled over your life. Every one of us, anybody and everyone listening to me, there is an aspiring date to your time here on earth. There is a day. We don't want it soon. We want to live as long as the queen live or possibly a bit longer. But do you know that only God knows that time? Only God has that date. Only God. You don't know. Jesus lived only 33 years. And there are a lot of other people, great people that the Lord used that did not live that long. But the question is, is it about the length of years that you spend on earth or about the quality of life that you live or the impact that your life is making? I'm not sure how old Paul was when he died, but we see the impact of Paul's life long after he was gone. Till this moment in Paul's life is still a blessing to us. I'm talking about Apostle Paul. And same with a lot of other people. My challenge to every one of us today is that whatever you do, remember there is an end. Remember, you are set on this earth for a set time. There is a specific allotted time for you and I, and that we are meant to fulfill the purpose for which you are here. We are here for. Are you on about pursuing other things that God didn't call you to do? Are you distracted about all, all of other things that was not your core purpose? I encourage you to go back now to begin to find out what is it am I on earth for? Why am I here on it? Why has God put me here? Why was I created? Why didn't I die? Even when, was I not miscarried? Why didn't I die at birth? Why did I live for as long? I don't know how old you are, whatever age you have. Why have I lived to this point? Why? Why? Why is the question to ask? God, we go through the scripture. God will not tolerate unfruitfulness. God has zero tolerance for unfruitfulness. You can check all through the scripture. 
there was a part, there was a tree that the Bible said the, the, Jesus Christ gave the illustration of the, 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 uh, the, the laborer, I mean the husband man who has, you know, the owner of the garden has invested so much in the tree. And he came, he didn't find fruit. He gave an order that the fruit, the tree to be chopped off. He said, let's cut it off because it's a waste of space. And then the laborer pleaded, and that will be Jesus now interceding for us to say, please give me more time. Let me put more money on him. Let me, you know, do a little bit of this and that or whatever farmers do. So that let's see if it will be a fruit. What about in John 15? The Bible said the tree that does not bear fruit will be chopped off. What about the parable of the talent? The one that was given one talent that didn't produce anything that wasn't fruitful. The Bible says it took the one that, without one talent from him and gave it to the one that was fruitful. Zero tolerance for unfruitfulness. Are you fruitful? Are you occupying your position? Are you fulfilling your purpose? Are you fulfilling your purpose? Your end will come. And I, we, I, we all pray that it should, doesn't come soon. But it doesn't really, genuinely, it does not really matter how long that you live. My late brother lived for 41 years. But that 41 years of his life, the impact he made, I haven't made a quarter of it. He has made more impact than people who have lived so many, several more years. But what impact are you making right now? Whose life are you touching? Who are you called to? Are you meeting them? Or are you distracted by your own personal needs? Are you putting God's kingdom before your own personal agenda? It's a thing for you to think about today. Do you bear in mind also that the things that you are going through are some of them are shaping you and forming you towards what you should be doing? Are you paying attention to your pain? Are you paying attention to the things that are coming your way? God is using those things to direct you to what you ought to be doing, just like what I'm doing right now. I pray that it's encouraged you today to begin to look inwards, to begin to seek the face of God for the reason why you are here and begin to pursue it earnestly because the time will come when that curtain will be drawn and your the days are over, and your eyes are shut in there, or where big Jesus comes before them, once the trumpet sound, it is over. It's game over. It's opportunity closed. Use it wisely now. God bless you. And uh, if this bless you, please do share. Share it and let it bless others. Share it and let us all get on do fulfilling why we are here. Hallelujah. Someone is waiting for the gifts that is in your life to be blessed by it. All right, this is me signing out again. Take care and have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.